Hello, Disc Golf fans, and welcome to the coast. We are here as Gatekeeper presents the Myrtle Beach Open, driven by Innova here at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. A fantastic couple courses we get to play this weekend. I'd like to give a big shout out to all of our sponsors and again, our Patreon supporters. I am Nathan Queen, joined by Nick Hansen. How's it going, man? Hey, man. How you doing today? Doing well out here. Splinter City is the first course that we get to play today. We get to see yourself, Luke Sampson, Joel Freeman, and a local player, Roy Nixon. Yeah, Roy Nixon is here because he won the Amateur Weekend last year, I believe. So that's why he's getting featured here on this card today. And as we see on our leaderboard here... Uh, good amount of touring pros that are going to be out here fighting for this win this weekend yeah, as well as a couple locals and uh, i'll let you go through your bag here yeah here's myself i'll be leading off um we're gonna see the omegas we're gonna see a moab some dracos um the helio quasar is a disc i put in my bag recently that's been very good to me as well yeah and luke sampson going with the castaplex Plast bag going putting with the Rico X, throwing a lot of bergs also. Uh, they see a lot of the yarn for his mid range, a lot of stall, and um, getting into Joel Freeman's bag. Yeah, Joel Freeman, Innova sponsored player, getting on his, I think, first feature card of the year. So, congrats to him. Um, but we're going to see a lot of Innova out of him. The main disc I would like to see is his whale, and that gator throws those amazingly. And then Roy Nixon, the local player, going to have a bit of a mixed bag here. Some DX, AVR, and Wizards. Uh, see lots of putters there going with just a single buzz. And then probably see some T-Birds, Eagles, and Athenas out here with some fairway driver shots. Uh, straight into hole one, 321 foot par three. You really want to get a disc on a hyzer either just in front of this that's not too stable Welcome or a more overstable disc off to the right around Keeper those trees. Media presents the Myrtle Beach Open, driven by Innova. This is our lead card of the day. Lead card of the day at 145. Welcome to T-Pad 1, Mr. Nick Hansen. What you think about that nice intro there? Oh, it was great. Uh, it's the first time I had the box on a feature card, so I was a little nervous, to be honest. Uh, but just got to step up and hopefully play our game. Just a little bit inside on that one, I believe. Yeah, a little bit inside there, going with that overstable disc like you talked about, catching one of those last trees. And Luke Sampson, fresh off of his first DGPT win last week at Lake Marshall, looking to start off this round hot. He took that line a little more around those trees with something on a hyzer Welcome the whole time. Great one, tee shot. Joel Freeman. Joel supporting the strawberry or the watermelon shirt today. Yeah, he switched up the fruits today. Usually it is the strawberry. Sliced fruit today, not whole fruit too. Looks like he's going to be going with a fairway driver. Trying to maybe cut inside these trees. Does so well. Gets a skip up inside the circle. Out, our lead card, Myrtle Beach's own Roy Nixon. It was nice to see uh, Roy out there. Had a little bit of a fan base, so he was getting some support. You know, about every other hole at least. Yeah, this will be my first look at him. So excited to see. Gets it a little high out of the hand, <clears throat> but works out nicely. Going to be CTP. And a shout out to DJ Heck Yeah there. Brian Short doing the intros. Uh, big disc golf fan. Make sure you check out his putter parties throughout the Carolinas and maybe farther here soon. It's kind of a testy putt to start your round. One you want to run, but can get away from you. Oh. 
Just a little short. Needed about 2% more power, I'd say. Yeah, it looks like he thought you might have had it. And Joel also needing a bit more power, maybe just some more height on that one. But our local, Roy Nixon, starting off with the birdie. Luke for his birdie here, just on the back side of the circle. And as you would expect if you watched last week, cards that one no problem. We did have 18 birdies on hole one today. Yeah, I would say 18 is one you want to get out of the box on this course really gets you in the, in the right groove. Yeah, especially with that right-handed backhand. It really is not quite a stock shot because you do have those late trees, but right there at it. Hole two, what we got here? Yeah, hole two is a par four, 534 feet. It's shaped almost kind of like an L, so you're going to be throwing a putter mid-range to the corner and then throwing a little bit longer second shot. Luke has done that nicely. I think the the ideal landing zone is about 260 to 280. If you go much farther than that, you're going to be in that thick wood line. Both of these first two shots are right there on it. Yeah, this hole is all about getting to that landing zone. You can't really press too far anyways. Mine's just going to be a little left there, unfortunately. Joel may be getting a little more aggressive, trying to do something that's going to turn right here. But he's just right there in the middle in a good spot. Here, I'm kind of just pitching a sidearm around the corner there. There's a little inside gap that I hit. And we're really just trying to get up and down for par at this point. A nice shot there from Luke. Going to put him pretty much tap in range. Give him a good birdie birdie start. Roy getting just a little deep there, but also going to be in a good position. Now Joel has a bit more of the ideal line here. He can just kind of toss a straight shot similar to hole one, maybe not quite as far. Oh, he's going to leak a little left, but still inside the circle. Looks to be a well-executed par play after not quite being in position off of the tee. There we go, Roy, back to back to start his round. Not seeming to have those um, nerves that you usually get out of the younger players or, or you know, fresh players. Yeah, I agree. Uh, first time on any kind of feature card or film usually gives people some big jitters. And Joel, unfortunately, going to splash out right there. I actually talked to Roy before the round a little bit. Got to, got to know him. And, you know, I told him just take a couple deep breaths before you throw and, you know, do your thing. You'll be fine. So far, he's doing that. Yeah, seems to be doing fine. He's got the lead through two. Well, Luke's most likely going to tie him up here, still waiting to tap in his birdie. But two down through two is the best you can do. Almost. Almost. Best you can do within reason. Yeah. brings us into hole three one of my favorite style of par threes you've got a straight shot 330 feet there's two choices you can choose from the the right side we're going to see more often kind of a mid-range stand-up shot or maybe fairway driver luke pulls that one a bit there's also a straight shot if you want to go straight at it over top of that other tee pad I feel like a lot of these holes out here are designed well. 
and they demand like a different speed from certain discs and sometimes it's like toning down a fairway instead of like overpowering a mid-range yeah i completely agree with that it's uh it's um really what you're more comfortable doing some people are more comfortable overpowering something and some people are a little more comfortable touching down on something so i agree with the good design it makes you really throw a different shot even if it is a similar distance on a lot of these holes and nobody's quite got this one dialed up just yet you would think at 330 this should be a pretty straightforward hole for us but as you can see those gaps are causing some issue yeah trying to take that right gap you really have to throw something that is going to stand up to be able to get that full flight but the straight gap's a little tighter so it makes you make that choice we've got maybe one opportunity at birdie here we'll take it roy's over here on the right side may have a long look Oh, no. Roy, continuing is this journey. Well, we're seeing why he won. Yeah, we're seeing this. As he starts off with a turkey through the brush. Whew. What What a, like, stab, snap, spin putt, whatever that was. That was awesome to watch. Yeah, I really didn't think he did have much of a chance there. I was just... Big old smile from him. Oh, yeah. He gave a little wink. I think he might have. He knows. He's got some tricks up his sleeve. Luke with a good par save there. Looks like to be outside the circle. His putting in the last, um, I would say, month or two months has been really good. Really consistent from, you know, that 20 to 35 distance, which you really need to be hitting about 80 to 90% of your putts. Yeah, 90% or above would, would be the ideal number to hit there. As Joel finally corrects after those first couple, he's going to put himself one down now. Luckily, those first two were for birdie, so he's not feeling it too much yet. All right, we're going to be on hole four here. 296 foot par three. The gap is going to be straight off the box, but then you're going to need to turn just a little bit to the right at the end. Most players, I would say, will be throwing either a putter or a mid-range. Roy doing it again. Looks like he's going to have himself another birdie look. Oh, Joel. Trying to skip one in there, it looked like. Nice smooth shot from Luke there with that putter. Just catching one of those last trees. Still going to have a birdie look though. And I kind of just catch some hangers there, but we're going to squeak up there probably about 35 feet or so. He's human. He's human. He's cooling down here, but what a great start so far by Roy. There we go. Finally getting your first birdie of the round. Nice circle two putt there. Yeah, it's good to get on the board and with a circle two putt to give some confidence to your game. Luke able to connect out there just outside the circle as well. Going to put him three down through four. Luke might have a little bit of more pressure today. He's got Anders on the bag from Castaplast with him out here. so Not a bad spot to come check your players out, out no. here. Great spot Probably to be. a few thousand feet away from the coast here at Splinter City as Joel Freeman maybe quite hasn't corrected his putting issues just yet. Misses his third birdie putt already here in the first four holes. Yeah, he, I would say he probably feels he should be at four under par right now.
All right, and here we are, hole five. 818 foot par four. Gonna be the hardest hole, I would say, on the front nine. As you can see, it plays down this road, which can cause for problems if you get a skip off it, but most players are just gonna try and get down there with something long and straight, and then hopefully have a chance to get in towards the green. Yeah, left side is gonna be better than right side. Luke may be a little bit pinched off over there on the right. As this looks to be a fantastic shot. Gets all the way past those trees. Gonna be up there in prime position, maybe even to see the pin. I don't I don't think I could see the pin, but yeah, I would consider that to be prime position for this hole. Roy getting a little bit fortunate there to drop down into the fairway. Joel here with another really good line. Wow, he's going to be up there a ways, and he will likely be able to see the pin. Yeah, leaked a bit left. We'll see if he's got to deal with the mound or those couple trees over there. This looks to be a very controlled shot from Roy. Nice choice, not going for too much there, just trying to get up and down for his par. Same from Luke. You could tell he wasn't really trying to bite off too much there. Oof. <laughs> so <laughs> close. I actually, um, I got way farther than I did in any of my practice rounds of that shot. So I was kind of like, ah, oh, what do I do here? <laughs> yeah, and pulled it just a bit, it looks like. Joel did have to step out around some trees, but able to work it pretty nicely. He's going to have another birdie look. Luke's going to be getting up and down for his par here. If Roy looks to do the same. Going to fade out a little bit, but he'll be inside the circle. And you uh, you were correct. This hole did tie as the hardest. Look at you. Halo polecat there, huh? She know. It tied as the hardest on the front nine with hole nine. Oh, okay. As Joel Freeman cards one of the seven birdies out of the 46 players, so definitely a difficult one to get the birdie on. If you get the birdie on this one, you feel like you're taking strokes on the field. I and mean, most of the time, you're definitely taking strokes on your card, at least. Roy to stay clean. And he just catches the top. Seemed loftier than his other putt so far. It did. It wasn't as direct. I don't know. Maybe the wind picked it up a little bit. Looks like the right to left may have lifted it on him there. When you're out in the open, kind of like these baskets are, it's very inconsistent what type of wind you're going to get. You can feel it, and by the time your downswing's done, it's gone. So. That we're getting towards the edge of the course by the highway where a lot more wind pushes in um, from that ocean where you were saying earlier, you know, we're only about a thousand feet or so from the ocean. Yeah. Here we are at hole six. It's a 210 foot par three. Kind of a snaking hole, but you really want to push right to left and then back right at the end. Most right hand players, I would say, will go at the forehand. Yeah, it's a fairly tight gap. This is Joel trying to give it an ace run there. But as it only being 210 feet, it's definitely one you feel like you need to get. <laughs> Looking a little sneaky there, but he's going to find himself inside the circle. Lined up for another birdie. Just a little too flat there? Yeah, a little too flat out of the hand. Kind of juiced it. That wind just kept it over left. As that was a very smooth sidearm from Roy. No movement. Didn't use that flex line. Just goes ahead and hits the gap on a hyzer. Very touchy shot. Another run, but just finding myself in these, you know, circle two 
not real great positions here to start this front nine. One of the things a, I'll say shorter course, because we're used to being on tour, uh, but shorter course can do to you is like if you're off, you're not necessarily scrambling for a par. You're having those 60 to 80 footers for a birdie, and it just kind of makes you feel like you're not making anything, even though that's pretty tough to make those. Yeah. I agree with that. All right, hole seven, 263 feet to par three. Players are gonna have this gap here to hit and then need to go immediately right. A lot of kind of stall forehands, I would say, or trying to cut it in front of those trees even with the sidearm. Let's look to see what our players do here. Yeah, the trees you're talking about cutting in front of, he just went around. That was not possible last year. They've done a lot of cleaning out where that is a gap now. Last year, if you went inside those trees, you were going to have a difficult upshot to even get around them. Okay, that's good to hear because, yeah, I heard it, I heard there was a lot of cleanup. I didn't know how much, though, so. Yeah. As you see, both of those players going a bit long, which is a pretty typical miss on this one. It's, it's pretty much a dog leg once you do need to turn right. So that stall shot like you were talking about is going to be the best play if you can I'm left-handed, so I would say mid-range is good. If you can stall a mid-range up, it's going to keep you from going long, but that is a bit more difficult to do with the side hand. Yeah, we got the right-to-left uh, headwind on this coming off, the, coming off the interstate there to our right. So There's mine here, just kind of pushes the flat, and I never get it on that good hyzer angle I needed out of the hand. And a lot of work left to do here. Yeah, some of these holes you're even required to scramble on even though they're only 263 feet. Let's see that polecat go in this time. Just once. Not quite. Look to have the height that time. Yeah. Started using that disc a lot more from like 60 to 120 feet. Gives me a bid, but usually it leaves me pretty close. Yeah, the one speeds are nice, nice and floaty. You can throw them kind of hard, but like you said, you're going to end up close. Joel Freeman for another birdie look. All right. Makes up one of those misses from circle two there through some trees. Gets himself a turkey. Luke just a little short there. Yeah, it looks like Joel's coming on strong now here. See if he can continue that through the rest of the round. Yeah. Players are going to be wanting to shoot close to double digits here at this course, I would say, to be on the lead card tomorrow. Yeah, perfect weather. Last year it was a bit chilly, had some rain going on. Uh, so these players are definitely enjoying the nice 70 degrees that we're having right now. Yeah, I know somebody was joking about possible uh, sleet rain that like they've had in the past. A nice par clean up there. A little nervy, a little high, but you know, it's stuck. Yeah, yeah, tailwind. This is the right. It's the right spot to be. Could drop. <clears throat> yeah, definitely the ideal scoring conditions. Not that breezy. You're always gonna have a little bit out here at Splinter City, right there on on the beach. It brings us into hole eight. 320 foot par three. Again, kind of a stalling shot if you can. Throw a flat nose up shot. Just gonna stall out a little bit. Uh, nothing too stable though, because you'll end up pushing too far left. Joel here going with, uh, I believe, an overstable mid or putter. Yeah, and being able to throw the mid is pretty ideal on this yeah. one. It keeps you from getting off to that left side. And then he snuck through there a little bit. This is more the intended. Oh, he did get that a little wide. I would say you're right, though. That is the intended line. Just a little too fast and long. I think he was throwing a fairway. So you have that. You run that risk there. As this comes off early but gets through, going to give you a circle's edge look. Yeah, they got I got pretty lucky there, I'll admit that one. Uh, again, last year probably would not have made it through. Oh, really? Wow, okay. 
There we go. That's the line. This is the line, and, and that's why Roy's here. Yeah, let's see it again. That almost stable shot there. You see he threw it flat, and it was kind of on a hyzer the whole way, but never moving left. That's, that's the ideal play there. Hit my second birdie of the round there. There we go. Keeping it clean. Mm -hmm. No bogeys. Yeah, like you said, though, that's really the idea. If you can have it on a hyzer but pushing straight so that way when it actually slows down, it starts to move left, it's going to be the ideal line for this hole for the right hand back in play. All right. Got two players in. Joel Freeman cards a birdie to get four in a row, and Roy going to be tapping it in. Going to have our first diamond frame here in a while. First diamond frame. Okay. All right. Four birdies moves us into hole nine. Love to see it. I would have thought we would have had it earlier, but better late than never. Here we are, hole nine, 428 feet. It's going to be a shot that slightly moves right and then hooks kind of right at the end. I would say this is a very big bonus if you can get it. Definitely. And to get it, I would say it plays slightly more favored towards a righty backhand, although you see Joel get a nice forehand down there. It's just difficult. You saw him fade off late, and it was difficult for him to not end up right as Luke just barely catches a tree on that corner. And if you can get a neutral distance driver or maybe even fairway on that right-handed backhand it can float you all the way there and keep you on that line yeah that's my ideal shot if there's not a ton of wind here i just don't have the sidearm to get all the way down on this hole so as you saw both of ours kind of catch early we're going to be on that right side i did however have a gap that was like on the right side oh man last branches there almost sneaks through Roy with a good upshot there to get him inside the circle for his par. Trying to give it that bit there. You could tell he wasn't sure if he was going to make it or not. Joel for five. Oh. And ends I up. I hate it when instantly out of the hand you know it's not good. Yeah, oh. and Joel Freeman is five under par. Could be nine. He has missed four circle one putts to, to have four pars. Okay, four pars now, he says. <laughs> so, absolutely slaying off of the tee. If he had that putter together, he'd be perfect today. Yeah, he is putting on a show here for us. But only three birdies on this hole. Chris Hawks, Jake Mon, and Will Deering. Only three able to get this one. Yeah, one of the harder holes there. You're taking your first bogey of the round so far. First bogey of the round. Gonna always be, trying to stay clean. Yeah, that's always always a good thing to do if you can stay clean. A great feeling. You see, here's our card. couple five downs, three down, and a one down. Isaac Robinson already bringing it in with an 11 under, setting the pace. There's those double digits I was talking about. And we've got a pretty stacked leaderboard there as well coming into us back nine. Yeah, some other hot scores you see close to those double digits. Back nine, again, is pretty scorable. Wind might pick up a little bit. We get away from these thicker trees. And we'll see you on the back nine, folks. As always, like, share, and subscribe. I'm Nick Hansen. Nathan, thanks for being here with me. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. We'll see you guys out there.